Hello, I'm Jo. I'm one of the ST3s currently on Neonates, um, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, Nick just asked me to do a really quick whistle-stop tour of the new um, online clinical examination. Um, first of all, thank you so much for everyone who's already taught us or who's um, thinking about signing up to teaching. We're really grateful and we really appreciate all the help. So thank you in advance. Um, I'll just go through kind of the basics of the exam. So the exam is nine stations. There's three long stations, development, history, and extended clinical, which is history and exam, and six short stations, two communication, two video, and two examination stations, called short clinical. Um, as you can see, the pass mark is pretty high, so we're all a bit anxious about that. Um, and uh, candidates are allowed to write things down both in the four minute preparation time before each station and during the stations. So the history is essentially the exact same as previously. It's 23 minutes long. It's a 14 minute history with a role player and then nine minutes to discuss with the examiner. Um, the communication station is almost exactly the same. It's nine minutes long. Um, it's just information giving or breaking bad news or something like that. The video station is also very similar. It's three minutes of watching a video that we might watch more than once, and then six minutes to answer six questions. And it sounds like these questions are quite um, prescribed from what I've heard from previous uh, groups who've done the exam. So the questions are, what did you observe in the video? What would you want from a focused history? What system would you like to examine? Um, what's the likely differential diagnosis? Um, what investigations would you like to do? And how would you manage the condition? The development station is the first one that's probably significantly different to previously. So it's a 23 minute station. There's a 10 minute history from the role player um, and then a two minute summary to the examiner on the history. Uh, then the next part of the station is an eight minute assessment of development and then a three minute discussion. I'm not sure how it works actually before um, the virtual exams, but currently they, they're just asking us to examine one part of the um, developmental assessment. So the history can be about all everything, so all parts of development and, as well as the usual kind of the past medical history. Um, but during the history, we're not allowed to ask about the domain that we're going to assess. So, for example, if we were asked to assess speech and language, we could ask about um, early and, and current milestones for motor function and for the social um, development, but we couldn't ask about speech and language skills directly. We'd have to assess that ourselves. And during the examination, we have to explain exactly what we're looking for. And I'll go into a bit more detail about that in a minute. The extended clinical is another 23 minute station. It's essentially a 10 minute history with a role player and then a two minute summary to the examiner and then an eight minute examination. And we have to pick which system we think is most appropriate to examine. And then a final three minute discussion. The short clinical exams are essentially just an examination. Uh, so it's a six minute examination followed by a three minute discussion. And there's no role player in these stations. So for the development and the clinical stations, we have to describe our examination, including how we would look for signs and what exactly we are looking for. And there's quite a clear outline of this on the RCPCH clinical exam um, COVID adapted hub. Um, and, it, and it kind of even breaks it down by system, saying this is how you do a respiratory exam. So it's quite well structured how we're meant to, how we're expected to, to um, do the examination. And then as we're saying the examination, the, gap, the examiner will give us some of the cues, which I'll talk about now. So there's two different types of cues. Um, they could be universal or dependent, and they can be spoken by the examiner, or they may be a, a picture or a recording as well. The universal cues are given to us during the four minute preparation time before the station, and they tend to be the um, things that you would naturally pick up just from being in the room with the child. Um, 
Sometimes they are signs that are more difficult to give during the exam, and that tends to be things like recordings of heart murmurs, which it will be difficult to stop and play and listen to during the examination. And the dependent cues are signs that are given to us as we say our examination. Um, so they're spoken, usually spoken by the examiner during the examination, and they can interrupt us to give us these cues. And it is meant to act a bit more like a conversation than us just rattling off um, a kind of learnt list of how we would examine a child. So, for example, I might say, OK, I would feel for hepatomegaly and describe how I would feel for hepatomegaly. And then the examiner would say, yes, you can feel uh, the leverage five centimetres below the costal margin or something like that. Um, but then those obviously won't be given unless we specifically prompt the examiner by saying we'd look for that sign. Um, I hope that has um, made some sense. Uh, please do sign up for teaching. Like I said, any time, any day, whether it's Saturday morning, I, you know, 10 o'clock at night, some of us will always be free and we're always really grateful for the examination, for the practice um, examinations. Um, we have found that online sessions are the best way to practice because it's the most similar to what we'll get in the real thing. And Nick has set up a Teams channel that we can use um, and we've been doing so already. Um, I think for the clinical and development stations, the best way to do it is, is if you have a particular case in mind and with particular signs that you know the patient has, then you can deliver that back to us as cues, um, as it would be in the real thing. That would be really helpful. Um, and ultimately, the same things that you know people fall down on, we will still fall down on. So things like presenting um, a patient to the examiner is difficult online or in person. It's the same problems. Um, so I've linked the spreadsheet there just uh, in case you're feeling inspired to sign up. And then here are two, these are two links um, to really helpful videos that were produced by the RCBCH uh, last month. They are essentially two examiners doing the examination. So it shows you how the, that back and forth should work um, and how, how a station would run normally. Um, so thank you very much and hopefully see you in teaching soon.